Hi everybody, this is Rick Lochtenberg from the Seed Network with part two of our videos on the all-in-one event calendar plugin for Word WordPress. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install and configure the plugin. So let's get started. Click Add New. Type in all-in-one event calendar. and then install now and then activate plugin after the plugins installed click settings and from this page you can choose to either allow the plugin to create a calendar page for you or you can select a pre-existing page to drop the calendar into you can choose the default calendar view either monthly or agenda and a weekly view will be appearing shortly then you have the option of changing where the calendar appears on that page so for example if you have a sidebar and you'd like the calendar to sit over top of the sidebar or, or, or a larger DOM element you can enter the containing DOM element here so for those of you who aren't familiar with the DOM or with HTML or CSS you may want to just leave this or bring a, a website programmer or developer to help you out. Um, but if you really want to take a crack at it, you can view the source of your page. So let's say we take a look at this page here. And right now the calendar is filling the, the box that I intended to put it into. But if I wanted to change that, I can either select and view the page source or select and inspect element if I'm running Chrome or Safari. In Firefox you can use um, Firebug or, or some browser but on any browser you can view source and you'll see all of these classes and IDs. These, um, these are what you're looking for so if you wanted to say select um, this class you see class equals main call. If that's the class I wanted to that I wanted the calendar to appear in. And you can see in the case of um, I can then go back to my settings. If it's a class, I want to make sure I put a period and then paste. Make sure there's no spaces. So that's what a class would look like. If it's an ID, you'd want to do something like this. Next you can choose which week you want the calendar to start on, the number of uh, events to appear in the agenda view and I think most of the other options are self-explanatory now down here is our ICS import settings it's here that you're able to import an ICS feed from almost any other calendar system let's say you're running Google Calendar and you'd like to import that calendar well here's how you do that so you would go to your Google Calendar, click Calendar Settings, choose a calendar, and then you'll see down here you have a calendar address. You want the iCal URL, so you would right click on that button and then copy link address and come back to Settings and paste. Paste it right in. Now you can select which category you'd like the events from that feed to appear and you can tag it however you'd like. Now all events that are imported from that calendar will be tagged and categorized with what you put there. Next you click add new subscription. Now you're not done yet. You set the auto refresh by default to daily. Now you can change that. You can make it twice daily or hourly depending on how frequently you would like the server to check for new updates to the ICS feeds that you imported. Now rather than wait until that time of the day for your newly imported feed to update, you can go ahead and force it to grab the feed right away by clicking the update button. Now if it's a big feed, it will take a little while to import. So you may want to just go ahead and click update settings and then come back to this. Next you can start adding events manually by clicking add new. You can enter the event title. Add a description. Category. 
and tag. And it's down here that you have the event details. You can make it an all day event, you can set your start and end time, and you can set this event to recur or repeat. I'll quickly show you how that works. You can set the event to repeat every day and any number of days you'd like. I would recommend setting an end date on all recurring events. If you don't, it puts more load on the server, so you would really want to put an end date. Even if it's a year from now or two years from now, it's a good idea to put an end date on all your recurring events. Weekly allows you to select by day of the week, and you can repeat that every X number of weeks. So if it's every third Wednesday, you can say Wednesday, and then repeat every three weeks. Same thing with monthly. You can choose a day of the month, and let's say every 18th day every three months. And the same goes with year. Next, you can put a venue name and an address. Now, if you'd like to enable Google Calendar, you just simply need to select it. And then you enter your cost, event organizer information, and you're done.